All right, welcome in to Ignition, our weekly preview show for the week in AEW. I'm Shades the Vibe. And this is Kelson and Well Shades. Uh, after an interesting show last week, I think we have another interesting one coming up this week as well. We've got Aki and Wolf in here with us. Uh, always good to see these guys, and we're just going to hop right in because Shades, you have something to tell us about FTR and what Dax Harwood is saying. Yeah, so uh, after winning the tag team titles last week, uh, both Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler have been pretty vocal on Twitter about uh, it's been a love fest between them and AEW, and they're sort of laying out their reasonings for re-signing. And this was an interesting quote, I thought, uh, from Dax Harwood that I saw on Twitter today That was that's a pull quote from his uh, FTR podcast that's going to drop tomorrow, and it's this. And this is Dax Harwood on FTR re-signing with AEW. Quote, I felt that working for Vince, I was just a number, just an object to Vince. To Tony, I am a human being. He cares about me, my feelings, my family. Working for someone like that, obviously, is going to make our decision much easier, end quote. That's a hell of a quote and a hell of a endorsement from a major talent. Um, And I think it's important to point out because it feels like that's pretty much universally the attitude toward Tony Khan of people who re up with AUW or who decide that that's where they want to be. You hear the same sort of things from Moxley. You hear the same sort of things from Chris Jericho. And so I, I, it's going to be uh, another thing that dad, that Dak says he's got dropping tomorrow is he's going to be giving his state of pro wrestling speech. Lord help us for whatever that is. But uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll have to see what what truth bombs he's going to drop. But I just thought that that was an interesting sort of note to start the week as we sort of see AEW and WWE going in divergent paths. For better, yeah, or you worse. know, the thing is the thing the thing that I find interesting is that what was what Dax said, as you said, it's kind of like a universally uh, accepted thing to say about Tony Khan. On the flip side, what Dax said about Vince McMahon is kind of a universally accepted thing that's said about Vince. I I just that just stood out to me. Really interesting quote. What a, you know, Aki and Wolf. What are your opinions on that? I mean, how do you feel about uh, Dax Harwood just coming out right out and saying something like that? Um. You know, it's kind of is the reason why I'm a fan of the company. You know, I kind of grew out of wrestling and kind of got back into it because of how Tony treats or how, you know, the things that I was reading about how how Tony treats his performers, how he actually cares for them and like pays for their travel and their their lodge. And, you know, he he definitely and, and of course, a lesser work schedule, you know, which is pretty important. Um, it's not surprising to me, you know, that FTR, that Dax at least would say that I always kind of felt deep down they were going to resign, even though they teased us for a couple months. I wasn't really a fan of that, (laughs) but, um, you know, I, I, I think it's just further proof that Tony really does treat his workers maybe more fairly than the competition. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. What about you, Aki? Do you have anything to say about it? Mm, basically the same thing what Wolf said. Great. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'd want to work for Tony Khan, wouldn't you? I mean, he's a better boss than I am. He's got a lot more money, too. And one other... Gives a lot more... Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say quickly, he also, you know, they have more cre- creativity freedom or more creative freedom. In AEW, which is important, especially for an independent worker, you know. Right, that's a good point. Very good point. Speaking Shades, of, where were you gonna? I was, I was gonna say, speaking of independent workers deciding where they're gonna apply their craft. Breaking news. All right, well, maybe not breaking this moment, but uh, it was announced today that um, not only. Has Billy Starks reportedly signed a contract with AEW? 
Uh, but also Brian Cage also resigning with the company uh, along with FTR. Uh, not together, of course, but both both of them deciding to stay with AEW. Of course, there's rumors of a WWE hiring freeze. But uh, there was, I would at least say, no shortage of interest in either of those two. Really, any of those three, if you, if you count Billy Starks as well. So that, I think that's pretty big. Three pretty big signings right in a row for AEW. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I'm especially excited. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm especially excited about Billy Starks because, look, she's in high school. She's 18 years old, and she's already better or as good as many of the women's roster. She fits right in now at 18. Can you imagine when she's, you know, an old lady like Julia Hart at 21? I mean, can you imagine where she's going to be in three years, two and a half, three years? She's got an amazing upside. You know, that match that she did again with Jade was a really good match. And I mean, it, you know, it made Jade look good. It was one and of Jade's better AEW matches. I have to say that. Matches are only going to be as good as your opponents allow it to be. You know, both of them have to play off each other. Uh, I, I thought it was a great match, especially when you consider that you had the TBS champion going against an 18-year-old high school student, and that is a big deal. Speaking of 18-year-old high school students, and I'll give uh, Wolf and Aki a chance to speak on it. But we've got another one that's going to be debuting for AEW on July 12th on Dynamite against Swerve Strickland. This has already been announced. Uh, and it's Nick Wayne, who signed a AEW contact, uh, contract and has appeared on AEW TV in a non-wrestling role. But he did sign an AEW contract at 16, but the contract stated he couldn't appear in the ring until he was 18. Well, he's appearing, he's going to be turning 18 pretty soon. And just a few weeks after he turns 18, he's going to be on the big show against Swerve Strickland, who, by the way, he just fought on De- in Deny, the, the wrestling promotion, uh, Defy, not Deny, Defy Wrestling. And uh, he beat swerve and took swerves to five wrestling championship so let's you know give uh shades and wolf and aki a chance to talk about uh what they think of billy starks and are you excited about nick wayne the new 18 year old coming into the company we'll go with wolf or uh, uh aki first um i i'm just really excited to see nick wayne in aw soon well, well, Aki, you know who presented the contract to yeah. Nick Wayne is your boy. Go ahead and say his name. I know you're dying to. Darby Allen. There you go. He says it with such love and shyness at the same time. I love it. He's probably not um, so happy that Brian Cage resigned then considering what he did to Darby Allen on Friday, but go on. Oh, the bump. I've watched that several times. It looked like Darby came right down on his face on that ramp. But anyway, Wolf, do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, um, I felt they were great signings, and it really shows how into the future AEW is looking. You know, they really are, you know, picking up these young, almost prodigies, um, scooping them up fast before they, you know, go elsewhere. It's it's great. I think um, I know we're probably going to talk about later, if I'm not mistaken, but I think Billy Starks would be a really good addition to a possible tag division if, if there ever is one. Um, I'll talk more about that later. And of course, um, you know, it, it relieves me that Cage was working with a contract <laughs> in the last couple of weeks as, you know, champion. Yeah, that's big. What about you, Shades? What, what's your take on this, buddy? Well, I mean, obviously, all of these signings, FTR, Brian Cage, uh, uh, Nick Wayne, Billy Starks, it's Tony's being proactive and adding talent to his roster. I don't think anyone can doubt. I mean, let's just look at the AEW women's roster, just the AEW women's roster. Now, it's not like other promotions have bad women's wrestlers, guys. 
It's Impact has Mickey James, Kylan King, and Deanna Purazzo. Those are about as three good pro wrestlers you'll ever find, right? So WWE has Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. They've got Natalia. They've got really good talent as well. There's nobody who can touch AEW's women's roster, especially now that they have Billy Starks. That's my take. Okay, fair enough. Shades, do you have do you want to introduce the next segment, or what do you want to do? What do we want to talk about? Well, let's talk about uh, Wolf. You wanted to talk about All In. That's that seems to be a hot topic right now. What did you want to want to talk about as, in regards to that show coming up? Um, I just am really interested in seeing what type of card they're going to put together. Um. It seems like it's going to be even a bigger show than Forbidden Door. You know, like I really think they're going to pull out all the stops. There's going to be surprises. I read that there's going to even be musical guests invited. Like they're really trying to build this as maybe perhaps the biggest show, literally and figuratively, um, that they've ever done, that the company's ever done. So you know, to, to deliver on that, we, you know, a card has to be put together and um, there's a lot of speculation on, on what the matches are going to be. I, I personally do think that we're going to see um, CM Punk. I really do. I think that, you know, they're trying to sell out Wembley and I really think, you know, Punk wants to come back. I think he will come back. I know that this is probably <laughs> a hot button topic, but I do think that he's going to be involved in the show in some capacity, either in a match or, you know, he's going to show up as a surprise. Um, yeah, I was just kind of interested in see, in hearing what you guys thought about what type of car, like the matches that you see AEW well, putting on. Let me ask all of you guys, Shades, Wolf, and Aki, a question. If CM Punk is going to be at Wembley, do you think that he should be a surprise or do you think that they should have him do something, not necessarily in the ring or even in the building, but cut promos like from home right. and allude right. to the fact that he's going to be there? Because don't you think that that would spike ticket sales like crazy? Well, I mean, they sold out the United Center on a rumor, so they can kind of do the same thing, you know, like just hint towards it and and really you know make what do you it kind think of dex known. harwood's doing now pal yeah totally i i think he's working working us i think it's happening and i think it's going to happen at all in yeah, did dex say something like my dream match would be ftr and cm punk he was the speaking elite. directly to tony khan and asking him if he wanted to sell out wembley and telling him that the elite versus ftr and Punk would uh would do it. Yeah, I just think that they have to make the match and have the match at Wembley, not just have Punk come up and do a promo, because I think that would be deflating. There's one other thing about the card, Wolf, that I wanted to ask you you guys about, uh, because I've seen a lot of comments about this, and a lot of these comments are from UK fans. And the question that was po pro uh, posed to the UK fandom uh, is, do you want to see uh, matches with, you know, Jamie Hayter and the other, frankly, English wrestlers or, or, or you know, UK wrestlers, or would you rather see, quote unquote, AEW matches? What do you think that most of them are saying? Um, not too sure. I mean, I would be okay with Hater versus a non-contractual AEW United Kingdom talent. Um, not really sure who that would entail. Although they do have a match, you know, right on right in their on their roster between Hater and Soraya. I was going to say Soraya is right there, bud. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But they might be go. You know, they might be leading into um double or nothing with that match. I'm not sure. Yeah, a, a lot of the people, I, I would say easily, the majority of the people are saying they want straight up AEW matches. Uh, they're not really into the homer always winning, 
but they want to see their their wrestlers in the matches, but they don't want to see to be kind of boring. They said if you know if Hader comes out there and has a easy win where she's got to you know, and then you have the others that are coming out there and doing the same thing, you know, who are the UK wrestlers? There's Soraya, there's Jamie Hader, uh, Kip Sabian, um, who are some others? Pack. Yeah, Pack. And we really need Pack back. I think really Pack do. needs to be on this show. I, I, I as far as I, I would agree that most UK fans are just wanting to see a straight up UK show, but Pack is like he he crosses that Venn diagram of being a UK talent and also amazing, right? right. Like. So it's it's that's like almost like a shoe in like you got to find somewhere for Pack and what a place for Pack to poten- uh, potentially uh, regain the international championship that he lost to Orange Cassidy. Right. Going back to the Wembley show, there was a point that I wanted to make. Uh, Wembley, uh, in a non wrestling capacity, holds ninety thousand fans. With the setup for wrestling, it'll probably hold probably anywhere between 94, 95, 96,000 fans. Um, the largest audience live show that AEW has had was at Arthur Ashe Stadium um, for Grand Slam. And I think that was around, tw- I, I want to say around 24,000. Um, I think they're easily going to beat that. But what would you say would be the chances that AW sells out Wembley Stadium. And if they don't sell out, what realistically do you think the attendance needs to be for it to be not a commercial success, but a uh, fandom success? If they can get to 40, that's a big number. 40,000 is a big, big number. I think they'll do do 25. I think they'll do 30 pretty easily. You start getting over 30. That's, that's when you start getting some like heavy territory for drawing. And so if they get to 40, I think, I I don't, I think they would be just, I think they would pass out from excitement if they drew over 40,000. Yeah, I agree with you. I think, I've been saying for a while, I think like if they can sell like 30,000 tickets, it's it's a success. And right. I think they're going to. Go ahead, Aki. Yeah, like if they can at least get like 30,000 tickets sold um, for that one event, I think that would be a a win. Right. No, I agree with you. I, I think they have a shot at selling this thing out. Maybe not a true sellout, giving a lot of uh, sponsors and whatnot tickets, but I think you're going to get a bigger, as far as ticket sales go, maybe a little bit lower, but I think the crowd itself is going to be pretty darn huge. It's an interesting, uh, it's a kind of a hot button topic on Twitter because a lot of the, a lot of the pro a uh, WWE crowd is, saying that it's stupid to book a stadium that you can't fill, but it's, but like people do that all the time. Like that's there's shows go in stadiums all the time and they, they, they mark off sections. I mean, wrestling shows do it. Boxing shows do it. You can't this. It's normal to do that. I I just think it's funny. Sometimes the things that people latch onto. Right. Well, Shades, you had started to say something before I kind of interrupted you to carry on with the Wembley thing about could Pac be the one to defeat Orange Cassidy at at the Wembley show? Or, you know, as you said, let's talk about Orange Cassidy. What do you think? Let's talk about Orange Cassidy because... His his record and his streak numbers keep getting changed, and I, I guess he's up to some amount of wins in a row now. I don't know, but um, more than two. <laughs> he's clearly one of the hottest 
people in the company. They're starting to get some story going with him, you know, and potentially the house of black. And I think that's, I think that's a mini story. I think the larger story is that that orange's attitude of just being able, willing to fight anyone anywhere is, is starting to wear on him. And so, um, you could see a guy like Pac sort of biding his time and waiting and waiting for him to get just worn down enough. Now, will he hold that? I mean, all ends in August and it's April. It's four over four months away. Yeah. So I don't know if he'll continue to hold it that long. If he did, I think, I think I'd be okay with it. If he dropped it to pack at Wembley, I think, cause that would be a big moment. That's a, that's a Davy boy Smith at, SummerSlam kind of moment, right? Winning a title, like so you could build it, but it, but kind of in reverse because Pack would be the heel. Um, so I I think it presents an interesting story to do it that way, considering that Orange is the one who beat Pack for the title, and so it's kind of a it's kind of a full circle thing too. It's really um. But more than that, I just think I'm just really curious because I feel like they're trying to do something with Orange Cassidy now. They see that they have this very hot commodity. Where do you guys think Orange Cassidy is going to go? Because I think it's really it's wide open as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I kind of. I'm sorry, Aki. Go ahead. No, no. Whatever. Whoever's speaking, speak. Go ahead, Wolf. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so I noticed in the last um, week or so, or really just kind of the last Dynamite, Orange was showing a little bit more emotion than usual. I do think that they're kind of going somewhere with his character, where he's like not this laxed re- or relaxed um, type of performer. It seems like he's starting to show a little bit more fire. I mean, I don't know where it's leading, but I am noticing a slight, um, you know, a slight lean into like more emotion in, in his matches. How about aggression? That's the word that I keep thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like there was one spot. I can't remember who fall last week. All right. So there's one spot where he's doing his, um, his normal shtick. Was it a slap or a kick? I can't remember, but he like full on. No, it was a slap. Like he was slapping the dude's yeah. chest. Right. And then after the third one or or the third one, he like laid it in. And like it that was, was Drillistico, yeah. right? Wasn't it Drillistico? Thank you. Yeah. Drillistico. Yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah. And that, I mean, Drillistico that played that. He sold that so well, too, because he was doing the hand thing like, all right, come on, move it on, move it on. Like, you know, let's get this shtick over yeah. with. And then Orange just like let him have it. The good thing about that spot was that Drillistico had a look of shock on his face, but even more than that, the people in the on on camera in the crowd behind them all had a look of utter shock on their face. It was great, and the sound too. I mean, they must have turned the cameras up because that thing sounded like a cannon shot. Well, let me ask you a question. I'm going to jerk this to shades because I want to hear what your opinion on this. I think we can all agree that Orange Cassidy over the last several months has been a workhorse. Has there been a dynamite or a rampage for a weekly show where Orange Cassidy did not wrestle that week? I don't think so. I think he's been on every show. My question then is, if the plan is for Orange Cassidy to lose to pack it in Wembley. Can Orange Cassidy maintain this work rate for that he's doing for the next four plus months and be not boring? What do you guys think? Well, that's the, that's the, the challenge, isn't it? Like that's the, that's why they have to get a story going with him instead of just, you know, the story can't just be, He's just putting on these banger matches, right? It's great, but, you know, things have to evolve and move along. Even even the acclaimed 
our, this 2.0 thing is an evolve of it's an evolution. You know, it's something, it's something different. You may not like it, but it's something different. But, um, and so with orange, can he keep it up for four more months? Man, that's a lot of shows. Um, I don't know. And I don't know if that's the plan. I don't, it, it, it's just one of those, like I could see it, but how do we get there from here? I'm glad I don't have to book it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. No, <laughs> maybe they could work at an injury angle where somebody injures him. He has to, take can we not weeks. have an interim international champion? Oh my God. Weeks later that he comes back and he fights the same guy again. You know, like maybe Buddy and you Buddy, maybe Orange beats Buddy to you know tomorrow night, but Buddy injures him, which would kind of go into the, you know, and it would be a work injury, you know, and then Orange could take a couple of weeks off, come back and fight Buddy again and destroy him, or whatever you want to do. By the way, Buddy Matthews Matthews is another one that should be a Wembley uh, UK guy. Yeah, I, I think I, I do think they are risking overexposing Orange a little bit. I, I, I think they probably need to give him a week off here and there or just let him do a backstage segment or something like that. Right. Like let it, the fans want to see Orange. That's fine. But he doesn't need to be he doesn't necessarily be, need to be performing every week. Um, so. Uh, I think. uh Speaking of Buddy Matt, so we were just talking about the House of Black. We had an interesting match on Rampage involving a member of the House of Black. That would be Julia Hart taking on fat ass, bad attitude Anna J, uh, who now has, uh, well, she has a new shade of eyeshadow. And I think that's something Aki wanted to talk about. The ending to that match. What did you have on your mind, Aki? I'm wondering if Anna is going to join the uh, the House of Black because she was sprayed by Julia. That's a really good question. It might take a year for it to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does take a year, right? <laughs> that 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 whole Julia turn was very much the definition of slow burn. Wow. Well, that had a lot to do with uh, injuries that caused that. But I'll, let me give you my opinion. Is Anna going to join the House of Black? No. Is Anna going to be used by Julia Hart? Probably. I would, this comes up, you know, with what my last thing that I really want to talk about before we get into the Dynamite preview. Uh, if somebody else has something else they want to talk about, great. But I posed a question today is, should AEW form a women's division? And it had a lot of people talking on not only the AEW fan hub women's, subreddit. Women's but tag I, division. Women's tag division, I, right? What did I say? You said women's division. I'm like, I think I got that. They got one of those. Oh, when, when you talk about need a tag division. Tag division. Thank you for catching that. Boy, do I feel stupid. Edit this. Anyway, uh, no. Nah. Um, and on, on the AEW fan hub Twitter also got quite a bit of response uh very positive toward that some people saying it's too soon which i don't get too soon you know, women have been wrestling you in see AEW. this roster yeah tag <laughs> events i mean to me having a women's tag division let's face it a lot of the matches if you go look at the matches that are on tv right now a lot of them the women's division are tag matches or three-way matches anyway might as well make them meaningful you know that's the way i look at it but i you know for aki this goes back to what your point was i kind of i'm rooting for uh julia hart and anna J to be tag partners uh maybe anna's a reluctant tag partner but it's going to be uh, I would I would think it would be great for those two to be tag partners. Now, some people may say, what about Tay J? Well, Ty Mello is, uh, you know, she's injured. She's got severe back problems that she's been dealing with for years now. And it's not going away, and it's going to take some time for her to get back. I don't think you're going to be seeing uh, Mello in the ring 
anytime soon. And frankly, uh, KJ has kind of run its course, in my opinion, and they need to do something different. I, I've always said this. I think Anna J and the JAS was a huge mistake. Uh, but yeah, what are your guys? What do you guys think? Uh, should we have a women's division? And who do you think Anna J should team with? And who do you think Julia Hart should team with? And please, God, don't say Abaddon. If they want to do the um, if so, you know how Julia got sprayed by Malachi, and then it took a year for her to actually join the. House of Black? Right, but that was because of injury. The plan was probably for her to get in there earlier, but they couldn't do the program with Death Triangle because of injury. Oh, well, right. let's right. just right. say that they were. And that's, that, that's why it took so long for Julia to turn, because they were waiting for Ray Fenix to come back. Well, Ray let's just say that the injury thing, and it actually does take like a really long time for her to actually join the House of Black. I wonder if, like, the JAS would try to have some sort of back and forth with House of Black. That's very possible. The problem with the JAS, to me, as far as in a trios match, is that they just don't have anybody that could go against the House of Black, in my opinion. Not on a consistent basis. Oh, okay, but Wolf, what do you think? You know, we were talking about evolution and evolving things. And I think that having a, a tag division for the women is just a natural evolution. I mean, their roster's grown significantly from just last year. You know, they signed a bunch of um, bunch of women talent. And, it, you know, I, I could just, like, name teams, like, on a whim that would work in a division. You know, going back to Billy Starks, I think Billy, a team of Billy Starks and Sky Blue. They would be a great underdog team. And, of course, you have Hayter and Baker. Um, you know, you have all these teams that you can kind of put together easily to compete in such a, you know, to compete in a tag division. And and what another thing to point out is, you know, it would be kind of um, unique. You know, WWE tried a women's tag division. I don't know. Do they still have one? I think they do. Huh. But, you know, it was supposed to be this big thing, and it ended up fizzling out. And AEW has like an opportunity to really say no, you know, women's tag division can be a serious and interesting, um, uh, you know, segment in in a in a broadcast, you know. Sure, Jades, what's your opinion on this? My opinion is, if you're going to have a women's tag division, you're going to have to have more airtime for the women, which means probably another show. The Saturday show. I would like to see a lot of female presence on that show, if not outright totally a woman's show. Um, right. I mean, you joke about it. I don't joke about it at all. I think done right, done sparingly, done with the Abaddon would be a great addition to the House of Black as kind of like a pet slash attraction for Julia Hart to bring out every once in a while, right? I think it would be great. People would be into it. And like, you can talk about how big she is or how she's only an inch shorter than Riho. She's worked on transforming her body. And I'm tired of her getting thrown under the bus and overlooked because, you know, people say the same kinds of things about Riho and we defend her, but Abaddon's put what? worked hard. And so what? I think that she's just as deserving of an opportunity. Understand something. If Abaddon comes out as a pet for Julia Hart or as a side attraction, Absolutely not, and I'd throw, I'd throw something at the TV. Abaddon is working her ass off. Yes, she, she gets injured way too much, and that's unfortunate. But she's working her ass off. She's, she's transforming her, their body. She does use the they pro, pronoun. Uh, they, you know, they are transforming. Abaddon is transforming their body and working her ass off and coming out and just throwing her out on there as a pet would just be like, I don't care how much work you put into yourself, you're never going to be good enough. Well, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I just mean like, I, I, I meant like didn't. the relationship they had, not like that they would use her like that, but it's just like they did the same, like how they treated like 
these other, you know, kind of characters in the past, you know, like uh, mankind and stuff like that. Right. You know, kind of right. like the the this this almost like a. I don't even know how to describe it, but um, attraction, I guess, is the like weird, weird attraction is kind of a thing I, I would use. Yeah. But I, I'm I'm rooting for Abaddon to make their debut and continue on on Rampage and Dynamite on their own accord and not as a attraction now as a uh, tag partner. I have no idea who you would put her with or put Abaddon with. You know, I I just don't I don't like her and Julia Hart together because I think they would ruin each other's gimmick they would their gimmicks are special and i don't think you want their gimmicks to battle each other for attention it just doesn't seem right well some teams that that jump out right away other than the ones that have been mentioned are penelope ford and the bunny because they're in a stable together now called the gallery if you didn't see that today that's kip sabian rolled out that's a new stable with the butcher the blade kip sabian penelope ford and i assume the bunny when she comes back from injury so that would be a that frankly that would be a really compelling team um right you've got i think sky blue and billy sarks would be a great team i think um you could have sheeta and someone like yuka sakazaki you know they probably would never like really win the titles because they're not here enough to compete to hold them but that could be a fun pairing you know like oh, stuff- I but I thought of Rashida was Shido, Shida and Willow Nightingale. Yeah, because that yeah, because they're like they have been friendly. Sure. Yeah. I, I I would love to see Serena Deeb tag with someone like Mercedes Martinez and or something right. like that, you know, just to be a bunch a couple of but you know, ass kickers. Well, let's, let's throw some fantasy book in here. Mercedes Monet comes to AEW, who is her tag partner? Hmm. Bailey. With who? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I said Bailey. There's, there's been some. Yeah, I don't know if Bailey's going to be able to get away from WWE, but uh, that's a good question. I think what? maybe Red Velvet. That would, that could be interesting. Those two look alike. I mean, they're both. They both have the same, like movements almost it's amazing i, I don't think I you bring red- mercedes monet in for a tag program i think that's that's what makes that so hard is because she is she's on another level right now like she's she's by the time she's done with <laughs> new japan she's going to be able to write her own ticket anywhere she wants to go because she's killing it over there right now so well that's really all i have to talk about as far as uh you know some of the bullet points. Did you, anybody else have anything else they wanted to talk about before we get to the preview or predictions for dynamite? I don't know why, but when you said who would work for Abaddon, I thought Riho as like, um, one is like sparkly and all magical and stuff. And then one is a monster. I like it. I do. Beauty and the beast. Almost, but they're they're playing off each other. They're totally different. And it would be kind of funny if like Abaddon would want to bite Riho or something. I don't know. I I think there's, I think Abaddon's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I think she's going to, I think they, I'm sorry. I keep, I'm working on my pronoun use here. I think they are going to, they're starting to work more on the indies. I'm seeing that they are getting more dates now. So I'm, I, that is a signal to me that there's, there's something on the horizon for them that they're getting back in ring shape for. So stay tuned. All right. So let's get into the dynamite preview. Uh, let's look at the card. Uh, do we have the card anywhere? I'm trying to find a, 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 a can, like a, I have the card. Okay. And, you know, I'll start out with what I think is going to be the probably the consensus obvious match. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs defending the TNT title in a open challenge against Silas Young. Oof. <laughs> I, 
don't like Silas Young's chances. <laughs> well, Silas Young has some history with Ring of Honor, of course, as the television champion. Um, right. I'm going with Hobbs, obviously. You're going to go with Hobbs? Yeah. I mean, do you see this? How, you know, do you think this is going to be, has any chance to be? I don't think it's going to be a squash, but I think Hobbs is going to win. What about you, Wolf? A, a, a powerhouse. Powerhouse. Clean, clean finish. Yeah. And Aki? Hobbs. Yeah, I mean, there's really not a whole lot to talk about on this match as far as I'm concerned. I mean, does anybody have any kind of excitement about this match? No, I'm hoping that there's some kind of post-match or some kind of element. To maybe I think Wardlow might do a run-in afterwards. I think that will probably be very, very likely. Well, fortunately, the rest of the matches are really look like they're going to be really good. There's six matches, and the next match we're going to talk about is Chris Jericho and Keith Lee. This is a this one's got me stumped. I really don't know which way I was going, but I'm going with Jericho on this one. Jericho due to systematic cheating. Exactly. I I, I can't see Jericho lo- continue his losing streak because it takes him, you know, a heel that never wins is not much of a heel. What about you, Aki? What do you think in the Jericho Keith Lee match? I'd rather have Keith Lee win, but I think Jericho's going to win. Oh, so now we got Wolf. Is he going to go against the grain like I did last week and got completely humiliated because my win loss record was nothing to be proud of? I am actually. I'm going to say Lee. I think Jericho's going to have a lot of bad luck. This year, I think that's going to be kind of his story where he's going to lose a bunch of matches. And I think he's he's going to lose to Lee. I don't know if it's going to be a clean finish. I I would say, yeah. What do you just yay or nay from everybody? Who thinks this is going to be a clean finish? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> nay. Kind of kind of hard to hard to fathom. Nay. Nay. What about you, Wolf? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say clean finish for Lee. If Lee wow. wins, it has to be a clean finish. Yeah. I'd say it, you're right. It, that, that would be, it would be weird for it not to be clean and for him to win. Yeah. The only other way it could possibly be is Daniel Garcia goes to clock Lee and Lee ducks and Lee and Garcia hits Jericho with a chair or something by accident. All right, well, let's go to the next match. Uh, These matches are all really good, except for this one. And if anybody votes, I don't see how you can do it. We're going to go with John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli against (laughs) Brian Cutler and... uh, Brandon Cutler. (laughs) Brandon Cutler, (laughs) absolutely. Doesn't really matter. Can't even get his name right. (laughs) Throw guys, a, he's the executive vice president of content for AEW, but okay. You could throw, you know, a ham sandwich and a turkey sandwich into the ring, and they'd have about the same amount of chance as Brandon and Michael Nak- Nakazawa have. I, I feel like the prediction for this should not be who's going to win, but how long the match is going to last. That seems like the thing that's actually in question here. So, assuming we're all going to pick. Blackpool Combat Club. I'm going to say this match is over sub one minute, under one minute. So the question is then, I think we're all going to say BCC. The question is, who do we think is going to come out to do the save? Because somebody's got to save these idiots. I think it's going to be the Bucks. I'm going back to Shades. I'm. You know, I grew up watching The Price is Right, so I'm going to say a minute 30. <laughs> I'm writing this shit down. You, so we'll say in a minute 30. I'm going to say two minutes because I figured they're going to have to add time where they're chasing them around the ring. Now, the clock doesn't start until the bell rings. That's really important. Yeah, but 
the bell will ring, and then they'll be ch chased chased around the ring. I'm going to say in even two minutes. What about you, Aki? What do you got? I'm going to be ballsy and say 15 seconds. <laughs> Let's go. All right. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is the content I'm here for. <laughs> a ballsy 15 seconds. Oh, God. Oh, shades. Okay. Now you've. You've heard everybody. This is price of right price is right stuff, like Wolf said. So you you've heard what everybody said. So what's your time without going over? I said I said one minute. Less than I, I said less than a minute, but I'll say one under one one minute or under. But I'd I'd have to be more than fifteen seconds to beat Aki. So <laughs> <that's>, so so I'm in between the fifteen second to one minute plateau and then i guess wolf is in the one to one minute 30 and then you're in the one minute 30 to two minutes so, okay. so if it, if it goes longer a, than a minute 30 you win kelson i have a bonus question here if the if the case of any kind of you know tiebreaker okay where you know whatever does moxley bleed during this match what there's no tiebreaker there's no tie there's no way we can tie because we all picked a different me. Humor me. We'll make the Mox bleeding the tie the first tiebreaker. Does oh. Mox bleed match? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I say yes. I say he's gonna find a way to bleed. <laughs> I'm gonna say he's gonna make uh Cutler and Michael bleed. Yeah. Mox gonna bleed. I don't think so. So no, and what about Wolf? You got to come up with a yes or no for Mox. Is Mox is Mox gonna bleed? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't think Mox is gonna bleed. So now, there see what I think is gonna happen is Nakamura is gonna hit some dog shit right hand, just some lucky punch, and bloody is like his nose or something. And then Mox is gonna be like, "Oh, you gonna make me bleed? Now I'm gonna make you bleed." The only way Mox bleeds, in my opinion, is if Claud while Claudio's doing that. Spinning thing that he does. I don't even know what it's called. Uh, but when he's doing that, Moxley's over in the in the corner slamming his head against it's a giant term. swing, is what it's called. <laughs> a giant swing. <laughs> well, that was I'm glad we actually had a discussion about this match because I thought we were gonna be like, oh god. Listen, there's uh, always something to talk about. You just gotta have an imagination, pal. Boy, we had an imagination. So now we get to the three really good matches. And this one, I've already, if you change your mind, I'm going to kill you, Aki. Swerve Strickland and Darby Allen. I'm going with Swerve on this one. I think this is going to be a case of a non-clean win. I simultaneously love and hate this match because I want to see these two fight each other and really neither one of them can afford a loss. Um, so um, I'm going to go Swerve because I think Swerve needs the win more. Aki, you're picking Darby, right? Um. Say yes, because I already penciled you in. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf, what do you got? Yeah, I'm just... I can't see Darby winning this one. I really think it would hurt Swerve a lot to lose this match. I think Swerve wins on some outside interference. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think I think Swerve needs to win a little bit more, but Darby being one of the four pillars and trying to get into that match with MJF, do you, do you think there's a chance because MJF is going to be there? He's contractually obligated to be at in Milwaukee tomorrow night. Do you think there's a chance that MJF gets involved in this match in some way and causes Darby to match? Well, I mean, yeah, MJF I is so excited to be in Milwaukee as per his Twitter today. So, uh, He's going to be ready to get involved. What were you going to say, Wolf? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I I think he's probably, like, if there is any interference, I don't think it's going to be Brian Cage. Um, 
that there might be, you know, he, let me rephrase, he might interfere, but I think if there's interference to cause a, um, a loss for Darby, I think it's MJF that's doing it. That could also cause some tension when Nick Wayne comes. I wouldn't be surprised to see Nick Wayne in the audience tomorrow night because he's been there before. So. Swerve needs a big win on Dynamite. And he needs the win without Brian Cage or anybody else in the embassy involving themselves. I really think that. I think Swerve needs a clean win. Or maybe somebody that, like, MJF causes Darby to lose. Yeah, I like the MJF interference more than I like embassy interference in this particular instance. All right, so let's go to the fifth of the six matches. And this one, to me, is kind of obvious because of future booking, but it's Orange Cassidy, the international champion, against Buddy Matthews at the House of Black. Um, if you don't know what I mean, uh, there's a new Japan show that Eddie Kingston was booked to wrestle in and, uh, Kingston is injured. So he had to pull out and they put orange Cassidy in, in his place. And the match is now for the international championship. And that's in like two or three weeks. So I really don't think that Orange, for that reason alone, Orange Cassidy is not going to lose to Buddy Matthews. That's my, that's my vote. Yeah. Orange Cassidy is just, um, he's, he's, will lose at some point, but not to Buddy Matthews. What do you guys got? I see Orange winning. I think this might be leading to a Malachi Black versus Orange Cassidy. What do you guys think about that? Well, let's get Aki's vote, and we'll discuss that. Uh, I think Orange will win. So Wolf brought up a point saying he thinks this may be leading to a Malachi Black versus Orange Cassidy, and I don't see the House of Black losing the belts anytime really soon. Um, but I've always been, and this this kind of jades my predictions, I will hardly ever vote for somebody who already has a belt to win another belt. Uh, that's another reason why I would not pick Buddy Matthews, and that's one of the reasons why I would not like have Orange Cassidy Russell Malachi Black next week for the belt. Yeah, fair enough. It's just me with the well, you know, because the roster is so big, you know, uh, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, let's let's share the wealth. Anybody else want to chime in on the Malachi Black maybe fighting Orange Cassidy for the international championship? It could be interesting. Like... Go ahead, Aki. Sorry. I would like to see Malachi Black um talk about how um Orange Cassidy's like personality and how he's fighting has been changing throughout the months. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, if they get into some of the character work there, I think it could be really interesting. Orange is going to have to give us a little bit more though. Uh, I think he's willing to do that. Um, as we see in some of his more recent matches that he's becoming more emotional. So, but I, we definitely need something more to help us connect with orange Cassidy and maybe Malachi black to be, a, could be a bridge to do that. Right. So let's get to the final match of the night. Frankly, I think this one, this one's going to be interesting. Uh, we've got, Ruby in a tag team women's tag team match, Ruby Soho and Tony Storm against Sky Blue and Riho. Riho turns heel and joins the outcasts. 
Oh God. That would just that would just break my heart. Are you trying to make me cry? He is. He's trying to make me you you heard this. Think about it. Think about it though. Has Riho since really wrestling Tony Storm, she's come out with that pipe, but has she really hit any of the outcasts? Has she really been? She hopped in the ring there and they acted like they were going to do something to her, but they never really did. So I don't know. It would be spicy. I Everybody's. Well, when you say I'm not, I'm not going to put my, you know, any words in anybody's mouth, but if I'm standing around and I see a five foot one woman running at me with a pipe that's bigger than she is, I'm going to probably run in the opposite direction. And that's exactly what the outcast did in all those cases. So, no, they never did really have a confrontation because, frankly, who wants to get the hit, hit over the head with a pipe? Well, I'm just saying sometimes in those spots, they do have one person who just winds up getting stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time and they end up getting the chair shot or the whatever, you know. And so I do think it's well, interesting. I feel like Riho has had really good wrestling matches and she just had that banger with Hater, you know. And so maybe she's thinking, man, maybe I'm on the wrong side of this. Maybe I need to get a little more aggressive if I want to be in the mix for the women's championship. Who did Russell, Riho wrestle fairly recently, like within the last month, where she was laid out and then she had the L painted on her? Who was she wrestling? And I think that was a tag match, too. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. But she did have an L painted on her. The green L. So they did have a physical confrontation over the, you know, in the last month, I guess, before she discovered that. I no, think it's been longer than that. I have to go back though. I, I'll to be continued on this. Uh, I'm going to do yeah. some research. Anyway, I am going to have to go with uh, the double S's. So you know, Soho and Storm on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with the outcasts. Although I really like that idea, Shades. Of turning Riho. Yeah, I think Soho and Storm are gonna win. What about you, Shades? Are you gonna? I'm gonna go Soho and Storm. You know, the one thing that I find interesting, though, is that it's Sky Blue's first match as an official part of the official roster. She is all elite. Could they be using this platform to give her her first big win? Sky Blue, Julia Hart on Rampage won a match on on the main shows, meaning a combination of either Dynamite or Rampage, that she has never won a match, whether it's a singles match or a tag match on Dynamite or Rampage ever. That leaves Sky Blue as the only star, I guess you want to put it, on the, in the women's division, who has never won any type of match on Dynamite or Rampage. Could this be her coming out party and getting her signature win? It would be a nice moment for sure. Yeah, it really would. I really think so, and it'd be re- I, I that's the only reason that I'm thinking that they may win, because I just don't see them beating Soho and Storm. Or you than. have this really feel good moment where Sky Blue's just signed a contract, and everybody's excited for her to be here, and Rio just beats the crap out of her with a pipe. Breaks her leg, yeah. Yeah, what a great way to get heat on her, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Or sadistic. It's, I just, I'm saying, like, you know, there could be a case for it. I, it's probably not going to happen. I'm I'm just fantasy booking here, but I, I do think Soho and Storm are going to win. The spicy sort of bonus take would be Riho turns heel.
Wow. Do you really think that they're going to add more to the outcast or do you think they're going to keep it as the three? I mean, they've got the shirt with their names on it already. It's tough. I, they probably won't just practically speaking because of what you're saying, you know, the, the shirt and they, they like, they seem to like this trios idea right now. There's lots of trios happening and um, there's also some other stables forming, but there's people are, people are like, getting into their little trios and so um i don't i think maybe this will just be the three of them for a little while well just for uh to clarify something i am not an advocate for a women's trios division (laughs) we don't need a trios belt we need a tag belt okay so the the predictions that's the last match the predictions are in course we do have a uh mgf is contractually obligated to be there i hope he doesn't sing another song um did not enjoy that very much i want to know what part of the contract obligates him to be a milwaukee that's that's what i want to know like what is (laughs) they're just using that to make him come off as miserable i know right but in kayfabe like what part of the contract is there like a part of the contract that says you have to appear in X number of cities or these particular cities, or you have to have this many appearances. Like, I I don't know. Like, it's just kind of always funny. These terms that are thrown out, like contractually obligated. It's like someone yeah. posted last night about WWE using the term medical facility. Cause they can't say hospital legally. You know, it's just like, like it's As, the, Simon, Simon Miller makes fun of that all the time. Every episode. So, yeah. It's just we'll funny these to things we these medical. these terms we've come to accept in wrestling is being this sounding so official, but meaning absolutely nothing. It's also funny because shouldn't they be contractually obligated to attend every show? I don't know about you, but I have employees and they're contractually obligated to come to work. Well, it's funny, right? Because they're independent contractors, which Eddie Kingston has made clear for us what that means, apparently. Um so they each have individual contracts that they've negotiated with the company that dictate the, you know, appearances and terms like that, which I think would be interesting if you wanted to actually start to cover this more of like, I think one of my only real disappointments with AEW so far is when they started, they sort of promised us this sports like presentation and they tried it for a little while, but I feel like that's just gone down the crapper. You know, it doesn't feel like it's a combat sport. Now it's just a, I mean, it's a great wrestling show, but I, I think there was a potential for it to have more of a combat sport feel to it. Yeah. You know, I, it's funny that you bring that up because when I posted the power rankings on a, another subreddit, which was sub, sub subsequently, boy, oh boy, subsequently, it was eventually <laughs> deleted, but the discussion on there was they, somebody brought that up saying, these power rankings are really cool. You know, AW had said that they were going to treat this more like a sport and, and the rankings and the win loss records and everything else that they showed really made it seem that way. And the rankings then went, you know, down the toilet, you know, probably what the fall of last year, I think was the last time they did anything. I was, I think it was September, you know, and they were saying that they really appreciated the rankings that we got, you know, we all did together, you know, because they liked it. They thought it was cool. Uh, they pointed out what you just said as one of the reasons why they thought the rankings were were cool, that they were necessary almost. We have uh, a big roster, and so people can get lost in the shuffle. And sometimes just kind of looking at sort of the statistics and the raw numbers to let you see who's being featured, who's not being featured, who's getting a push who's not you know things like you look for trends things like that so um but yeah i think uh aew there's a lot of good momentum right now uh i've said i said they've had like three uh, two good dynamites in a row so this one's gonna be a clunker because i can't i can't remember when they've had three really good dynamites in a row so if they put another good one together tomorrow then we got a stew going 
Well, we'll be watching and we'll be back here for all elite talk at 1015 Eastern tomorrow, right after Ran after Dynamite. And uh we're gonna see. And I'm sure Aki and Wolf will probably make every effort to be here with us. Always appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Same. All right, that's going to do it for Ignition. I'm Shades the Vibe. And this is Kelson. Hey, good night, everybody. Good night.